the witch station with the Angala on Boy Teller Access just past uh, Sunny Patch North. <coughs> Lying right in the road. Station with the Angara Void Teller Access just west of Sunny Patch Mall. I do wonder if this is the Uncahumus. Ah, apparently it's the sticks, being told. Sorry? Oh, there's another one. Oh, nice. With the other vehicle being very close, I'm just going to speak very, very uh, quietly. But it turns out there is another female just to the left. But she is in the bush at the moment, so you can't see her. This is the three females from the Styx Pride. I wonder where the cubs are. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? A little while. I think I'm going to try and move between the, the males and the females. So. Yeah, so I've just left and they, they haven't moved anywhere. So. Yeah. I'll probably come down in about 10, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> No, 
Now, quite interestingly, the Styx Pride were numbering seven when I first arrived. But sadly, the Majingi Lance actually took possibly two out of their number. We did actually see them. I think it was Patrick that found one of the Majingi Lions with the carcass or the remains. There wasn't much left of the female from the sticks. So no one actually saw them kill her, but with them being at the remains and even feeding, we actually do believe that they were responsible for her death. Quite why it is it isn't clear unless they were trying to mate her and she she got caught with them and she was refusing. No one's really too sure exactly what happened there. But they could also be responsible for the death of another female. They were also seen in the same area. But nowadays they are mating with them, and I think the two cubs have been sired by them, by one of the females. And I'm thinking it's possibly the female that's still hidden in the bush. Now if this is true, apparently the, the female with the cubs hasn't been seen for a little while, so if it is true that the other female is in the bush, that means all three Styx females are together. The young male being pushed out now by the Majingi lions apparently, they are putting a lot of pressure on him. And he'll also be being moved on by the females as well, they tend to become quite aggressive too males when they're about two and a half, three years old. Well, I do wonder sometimes if it's a little bit difficult on the siblings, if, it's, if there's females and males who spend quite a lot of time together. I remember seeing a pride on my old reserve where there was a young male and two females and I think the bond between one of the females and the male was particularly strong. And she would actually spend, there is another female, I can see her. She just moved. So I might actually park where Lex parked. We might be able to see her a little bit. But uh, it got to the stage where he was being pushed out by the two males. And even the females were starting to turn aggressive towards him but his sister would actually go off and help him hunt. And every time she returned back to the Pride, it took her a little while to be integrated into the Pride again because obviously she smelled of him as well. So they weren't aggressive towards her, but they weren't particularly welcoming either. It was quite interesting. I'm just going to try and move. Just about to brush out, she can just about see her a little sliver of her body. So if she moves out, we should be able to see her nicely. It's either her or the male.
now I'm having a better view. That's actually a young male behind this female. So it's actually a female and a young male. I thought he had a few wisps of hair more than a female should. I think last time we saw the sixth male, he had a lot more of a mane growth than what this male does. So now I am confused. There's any viewers out there who does have a recent picture, maybe of, well, the most recent picture of the sticks male, but I'm pretty sure he had much more mane on him than this, this little guy. But as you can see, this is exactly what lions do best, <laughs> especially during the heat of the day. It looks like they did have possibly a small meal recently. and the other female. What are you seeing, lady? She's actually got part of her ear, the top right of her ear missing. Looks like a deep notch in her left ear, right at the bottom of the ear.
Uh, she's yawning again, so she could come up and join the other two. Good afternoon to you, Linda. I'm wondering are they far enough away from the Bajingi lions not to be a problem, or with all the mating, are they going to be okay now? And I think they will be fine. Uh, the mating, they have been spending a lot of time with them down on Mala Mala, apparently. So I think there has been a bond made between the females and the Bajingi lions, and especially with cubs being sighed by the Majingi lions. There they go. I think this is the old grandma. It looks like she has been in the walls a little bit. Come on, mister, turn around. <laughs> But I think in the next couple of years, when the coalitions of young males in the north and in the east that we know about, possibly in the south as well, once they start to grow up, they may want to move further into the Majingi Lands territory. And with only three Mapokos remaining, I don't think they're going to try and reclaim this territory. Although Mr. T apparently was seen just in the west, or Zimbambili, which lies just to the west of us. So I think he keeps coming up to maybe the boundary every so often. Okay. Good kid. <laughs> Do you see the males? Are they still Valerie? It's probably about 200 meters to where the Impala are. <laughs> Hi, Wee Pat. Good afternoon to you. And why do the lions lie in the road? Are they not scared of the cars? Well here animals definitely do have the right of way and they do learn that over time and they are used to the vehicles. Most of them have grown up with them so they know that then there's nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. And with it being sandy roads it's quite comfortable and you'll often find animals sleeping out on the road when it's a little bit chilly or even towards the evening, especially as we're going to winter, because the road will hold quite a little bit of heat and it'll keep them warm just that little bit longer. But as the sun is setting and it's getting cooler, I think it's just much more comfortable for them out on the sand.
As I say, this is usually around the time that lions will start to make a move if they are starting to get a bit hungry as the temperatures cool. So it is worth staying with them, especially since we haven't seen lion for a little while. And even though they're flat and not really doing too much at the moment, it could be they decide to get up in the next five minutes. It could be dis they just decide to stay lying down for the next two hours. It's very difficult to really know for sure. But this is the best time of day to have a shot at actually seeing lions moving around. And I'm really wanting to try and get a good look at the male. It could be that maybe he's just not been eating well and it's stunted the main growth. He does have quite a deep notch in his right ear on the outside of his ear, which I really would like to have a look at. I think it probably is a stick's male. If you look carefully, you can actually see on the legs, on the female, those spots. And when they are cubs, they'll have these spots all over the body. Just a little bit darker 